we go. MMD sticker. outside. After a lovely stop at the magnificent Clactol Beach, we headed back onto the equally magnificent B869 for our final stop of the day at the Drumbeg Hotel.
As it turned out, we were a little bit early to check in. So while they were preparing our room, we just dropped our gear, went for a wander to explore what Drumbeg had to offer. Turns out there wasn't an awful lot to see, mind you, not surprisingly, as it's a crofting village of only about 60 people. But it did have an interesting viewpoint. Drumbeg, our destination for day four. down the road and there, nibbling at the tree, there's a deer. Hmm. So, this is Drumbeg. It's a bit of a late review as the sun sets. But this is the tiny little Drumbeg Hotel. That's the only hotel in Drumbeg, to be honest. Very um, popular with anybody doing the North Coast 500 on bikes or, frankly, any other form of transport. And it's actually quite a wild but beautiful location. You can go over this little loch. There's a reindeer walking around. It's not the most salubrious place, as you can see. But the question is, is it fit for purpose? Well, let's go in and check it out. This is the small but functional bar area, pool table. Can I have one of those um, IPAs as well? A yellow hammer. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll be back in a second. Hi, I think. And this is the excellent owner, Scott Bowman. Gives us a little more information. And we are currently in room number four, which is perfectly situated to keep an eye on our bikes. A part just over there. It's small, um, functional, but at least it's clean. It's spotlessly clean. Oh, this is clean. There's the. There's no bath, of course. It's too small for that. Shower area. But overall, what do you think? Well, we've just been to the restaurant, and the food was fantastic. The location is unbeatable, and the room is small but comfortable, and really, really clean, spotlessly clean. Recommend it to anybody. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we're going back to the bar now and having a, an IPA, a local IPA. And a glass of wine. Okay, cheers. You say you're actually featured in Bike Magazine. We were featured in a bike magazine because I guess stayed with us and then wrote about it in a bike magazine. So you get lots of bikers if we, you're going to do the North Coast 500? We get lots of bikers because it's very popular for the, the bikers doing the whole thing. But the two main bits of road they like to drive are the Achen Bar, which takes you up and yeah. then Apple Cross, yeah, Cross. down and out, depending on oh. which way you do it, or the Loop, which is right outside the front door. Yeah. Where does the Loop go? 
It's from Lochinver to the Kyliskew end and it's a total of uh, 29 miles and it's single track, bends, turns and uh, it's very challenging, especially on a motorbike because you don't have a reverse gear. <laughs> of course, yeah. So having thought that Balach Nabar was the most challenging road we were going to have to ride, we now find out from the barman that the road we're going to do tomorrow, according to him, was actually much more difficult. It combines steep climbs and tight hairpins with lots of blind bends and blind summits. So apparently if you meet something coming the other way, you could be in real trouble. According to many sources, apparently this part of the uh, Drumbeg Loop, the B869, is one of the best pieces of the North Coast 500 to ride. And tellingly, its nickname is the Wee Mad Road. So we put our mild anxiety to one side and focused on drinking more IPA so and teaching Sue how to play darts. Me and Sue at the Drumbeg Hotel and me showing how to play 301. Oh, that's a triple! Do you want to Plus calculate 15, it? Uh, 18, <laughs> Shh. I think you'll find out right, winning okay, this game. Two, we'll see who wins in the end. Morning folks, welcome to day five of our North Coast 500 trip. And today you find us in a little tiny village of Drumbeg, which is quiet, um, out in the wilds, but a very pleasant stay. Um, today the weather looks set fair, 19 degrees it's supposed to be, and we are heading off from Drumbeg to Betty Hill. We'll check in later on. We set off reasonably early before breakfast because we could always get breakfast somewhere en route and to be honest we really wanted to enjoy the road rather than be worried about what we're going to meet coming round a blind bend. So we thought we'd go early and we'd beat the traffic.
So that was the end of the We Mad Road. And I've got to say, that, and the GoPro won't do it justice, but it was a fantastic road to ride. And I think the whole road from Loch Inver to Kalescu is probably certainly the best biking I've done and probably also the best part of the North Coast 500 route. But we've yet to see because we haven't finished it yet, but it will take some beating. to stretch our legs and take a couple of photographs at a viewpoint overlooking a ridge called the ascent which is derived from the Norse word for rocky ridge which highlights the fact that a thousand years ago this was Viking country road now over an hour and it was time to top up with some petrol and more importantly find a place to get some breakfast. So early this morning on the road by 8 o'clock we missed our breakfast at the Drumbag Hotel because we wanted to get across the, uh, the pass before it got too busy. So we stopped in Scurry for some petrol and a pit stop for some cross sorts of coffee at the Scurry Hotel. And now we're going to wend our way slowly up the coast to Durness and then Betty Hill. Or final stop of the day.
The trouble with riding this part of the North Coast 500 is the scenery. It's always continuously stunning and magnificent and the temptation is to keep pulling over, to stop and take photographs and videos. It was time for a coffee break anyway, and when we saw a sign saying Cocoa Mountain, it well, seemed a shame not to. Cocoa Mountain is a small gourmet chocolate enterprise. Apparently it's quite famous, won lots of awards, and there's a big celebrity fan base. A large order from Prince Charles was famously turned down after it was requested that the company add preservatives to a truffle recipe. So they're obviously a business of integrity. US senators and wealthy Middle Eastern tycoons are also big fans. There must be something in the chocolate. So there we were, sat enjoying our coffee in the sunshine with about an hour and a bit to go to get to our hotel in Betty Hill. When out of the blue, Sue suggested that why don't we head, instead of going to Betty Hill, head straight to John O'Groats, which is our planned route for tomorrow, because we looked at the weather forecast and tomorrow was going to be grey, cloudy and possibly a bit rainy. But it would mean adding another possibly three hours to our riding for the day. But having deliberated for a while, it did seem to make sense. If we're going to see John O'Groats, we might as well see it in glorious sunshine. So why is John O'Groat so special? Well, it lies on the northeastern tip of Britain and popular with tourists as one end of the longest distance between two inhabited British points on the mainland, which is Land's End in Cornwall, which is apparently 876 miles to the southwest. Unfortunately, it's not the most northerly point on the island of Britain. Dunnet Head is actually further north, but somebody obviously saw the commercial opportunities for John O'Groats and tourism the settlement takes its name from Jan de Groot, a Dutchman who once plied a ferry from the Scottish mainland to Orkney. Local legend has it that O'Groats refers to John's charge of one groat for the use of his ferry, but it actually derives from the Dutch de Groot, meaning the large. So John of Groats must have been a big bloke. Sticker. 
road sign. Brilliant. Here we are folks, MMD, North Coast 500, finally made it to Johnny Groves. Got to admit there's not a lot going on in Johnny Groves. But nevertheless, it's iconic. And then behind me, there is the, uh, the sign now uh, dressed in its Midlife Motorcycle Diary sticker. So now, having been in the saddle for, I don't know, we've been riding for six hours today, or been on the road for six hours, I think it's time for a coffee stop. So we'll, uh, we'll tune in later on.